What is the fastest way to iterate through a list? It's using something like C++ or another low-level language. But if you're here for Python, we're going to look at the fastest way to loop through Python. Now, if you're just here for the results, I will leave that down in the chapters below so you can skip through it. But, you know, why not leave a like because I made it easier for you to skip. But if you're here to get a demonstration and a breakdown of everything else, let's go ahead and jump into it. So we're going to import NumPy and we're also going to import Timeit. Now, I know you're thinking, why not use the time module? And you're right. No, actually, don't don't use don't use the time module. However, we will use the random.randit from NumPy. It allows you to specify just the low or the low and the high, which we will use in our case. And in our case, we're gonna do one through 10. Now, when I say one through 10, that means one through nine, not including 10. Then it also allows you to specify the size. In our case, we want to do 10 million because that's a magic number. Now we actually need to do something. So let's create do something, which will take a current number of integer. And we'll check if that current number is greater than five. If it is, we'll times it by two. If it's not, then we'll add a hundred to it and then return. So it's time to gather our competitors. First up is going to be the four in range. Now the rules are going to be simple. Every competitor is going to have the same exact setup where we define a new list and then they append to that list using do something. Using a range loop, you always have to grab the length of what you're trying to loop through. In this case, it's going to be test nums. And then when you get the index, you pass the index to the list to index the value, which will then store an attempt variable called current number and then append the value from do something to the new list. Next up for each needs no introduction. It does exactly the same thing, but looks a lot cleaner. Our next competitor needs no introduction, the while loop. You can tell how better it is by the fewer amount of lines that I had to write in comparison to the for each loop. Look how easy it is on the eyes to look at. But we do need to loop through it, so we'll create our own index i, which is equal to zero. Then we'll use while true because nothing ever goes wrong with while true. Of course, we need to index the value, so then we'll store that value in a temporary variable called num. Using do something, we'll append that to the new list. Seeing that this is a while loop, we do have to add plus one to continue the iteration and check if we're at the length of the list. If so, then we'll break out. Yes, I could have done greater than or equal to, but why not just do minus one? But the competitors don't stop there. For list comprehensions, we can actually do that in one line. If you're not familiar with list comprehensions and you need me to make a video, let me know down in the comment section below because I don't think I actually have one. The next competitor is going to be the map function. And yes, the map function is coming at the list comprehension with a one liner. And again, if you are not familiar with maps, then let me know because again, I do not have a video for that. Finally, we have NumPy, which is less of a competitor, more of an example. There are going to be times you cannot use NumPy, so keep that in mind. To explain this as fast as possible, we're checking for each element to see if they're greater than 5. If it is, we create a list of all elements greater than 5. We then sort that list and times each element times 2. We then store that inside of list 1 variable. We do the same with list 2, just checking if it's less than equal than 5, and then we add 100 to each element in the list. After that, we just add the two lists together, and we're done. In order to test it out, we're going to use time it dot time it to test each function that we just created. We'll call it one time. We'll then print these out in no specific order whatsoever to the console so that we can see exactly what we got. And the moment you have all been waiting for, the results are. Huh. I thought while loops would be the fastest. With all jokes aside though, while loops are actually one of the slowest ways to loop. You don't want to use a while loop unless you have to. Believe it or not, while loops still have their purpose though. Like if you're ever looping through a list that needs to be modified, you would want to use a while loop because you don't want to modify a list while looping in a for loop. When it comes to list comprehension, you do want to use it as sparingly as possible. It is very hard to read for yourself and for others. If you really need the speed or you really need the one liner, if it makes sense and you feel it's right, then use it. If not, try to avoid it. Same with NumPy. NumPy is good, but if you don't need the speed, don't make it that complex. Using a range doesn't really, I, I personally don't use ranges. If you have a use case of ranges, definitely leave that down in the comment section below, but I'm going to say you really don't need them. And for maps, you use them when you need them. Most of the time you're going to be using for each loops, but try your best not to overuse them. Now, if you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much. If you liked it, of course, leave a like and subscribe for more content. If you saw anything that I did wrong, definitely leave it in the comment section below or something you could have done better to help out the community because we're all growing together.